Feminism exists because men allow it to exist. Hi, everybody. Welcome to The Virtue Signal. I'm Bill Whittle with my friend Alfonso Rachel, and you probably uh, know the drill by now. Uh, so I've noticed uh, I haven't been I don't watch TikTok because, you know, I, I don't want my brain to turn complete mush. It's happening fast enough on its own already. Uh -huh. uh, but I watch a couple of people who watch TikTok. <laughs> I watch a couple of people. I don't even want to call them conservatives so much as they're just common sense people, right? Okay. And obviously, there's this um, there's this uh, libs of tip TikTok that basically finds the nuttiest and the looniest people on TikTok, and so on. So, I'm willing to accept that this is a extreme edge. But let me tell you something I've seen consistently now for a couple of years, and it really worries me. It seems to me now that um, all across the board. Women have become more degenerate than men, mm. and that's not good uh, at all. And what I mean by that is nine out of ten of the Karens, older people, right, who are going to call the manager and demand that you you can't videotape me while I'm pepper spraying your dog, you know, that kind of thing, right? So we all know what that kind of Karen is. When I see people freaking out on airplanes and screaming, usually it's women, not always, but usually. Um when I see people losing their just melting down in 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 a Starbucks or at a in or in a you know Walmart or something like that, it's almost always women who are shrieking at the top of their lungs in hysteria. And even more disturbing is among the Gen Zers this idea that you know you're gonna be you're gonna go off on, on Easter vacation, be a bad bitch, and, and you'll you'll do as many guys as you want to, and then when you come back, you'll be loyal to your boyfriend again. And across the board as well, in, in, in concurrent with this, I'm seeing more and more and more videos of women who are really destroyed, you know? Yeah. They're just weeping. They, they, they don't know what to do. Right. They, um, the lie that they've been told has caught up with them. Uh -huh. And so right in the middle of the, you know, the older Karens and the younger, you know, uh, chicks that have a body count of, you know, 30 or 40 or 100 or something, uh, right in there in the in the mid to late 30s into their mid to late 40s, I'm seeing more and more women who are essentially using TikTok to cry into the camera because they got no one else to cry to, frankly, and talking about how um, they're alone and they have a nice job, nice car, and they're alone and they got their cats and all the good guys are already married and, and all the rest of it. But if it were one or two things or one or two sectors, you know, one or two age groups, I wouldn't be so concerned about it, but but it seems to be everywhere. And I think that I don't I'm not going to say this is the officially stamped conservative viewpoint, but certainly in my understanding of, of history and and uh, relationships and stuff, it seemed to me always that that it was women who were supposed to be moderating, you know, the, the passions of men. And and as as the society becomes ever more feminized and men become more and more marginalized, largely because of feminists, mm -hmm. there just seem to be more and more women who are just unhinged and unmoored. They have, they have no emotional stability. They've got no, well, that's, that's it, no emotional stability, and they're kind of losing their minds. And I think this is a, a catastrophe. I also think that perhaps it might be the harbinger of a, um, of a realization that this that this third wave feminist you know story about women need men like you know like a fish needs a bicycle that may be uh, proving in the laboratory of reality to be um, maybe not so true. But do you notice that as well? Oh, definitely, man. Uh, man, I saw we saw um, another meltdown, and this woman was uh, in the military, and uh, I mean she just she's like woman, you ain't even on the battlefield. You're, it looks like you're in a gym or something like that, and you're That's mad right. because you didn't get I don't know some French fries or something like that. It had a full on meltdown. Uh, and it's like, that's, that's the kind of stuff that we don't really, you know, need. It's like, of course, you know, somebody's going to have, uh, you know, be frustrated and stuff like that, a man or a woman. Uh, but things like that, it's, it's, you, you know, that there's a much deep, deeper seated, uh, deeper seated issue that's, that's going on with that. But so, yeah, to your point, yeah, I see these, these kind of meltdowns that happen. And that was just like the latest one that I, I, I had seen, but you're right, man. 
you know, uh, these women are finding themselves like disenchanted, disillusioned, disillusioned uh, uh, and feeling unfulfilled with this idea of what it is to be a strong woman or a, a complicated woman and things like that. And it's like, you know, I've, I've said before, there is no value in a woman being complicated any more than there is a va value of being a complicated man. A man doesn't need a complicated woman. And a lot of times when they go into these relationships, that's what they're having to deal with, with women being sold on that they need to be strong and complicated and independent and all that sort of stuff. And those things are taken way out of context, but they don't know how to feed the context that it's supposed to be in. So they try to be complicated. It's like, look, I don't need a complicated woman. I need a woman who can deal with complications. Yes, I don't need a complicated. Life's already complicated. From the onset of this whole thing, the Lord said, hey, Adam, you're going to need a helper, man. You know, so and, and, and lo and behold, here the woman comes. But the woman has assumed that to make a better man, she's got to lead him to his feminist side. You need to tap into your feminist side. No, you don't lead a man to his feminist side, feminine side. You lead a man to the Lord. That's what you're supposed to do. Remind him you are my priest in this house. You are my king in this house. I am your queen in this house. And as kings and queens, we serve each other, right? It's not about you serve me and all that sort of stuff and, and, and whatnot. And we minister to each other. That's what we're supposed to do. But see, women ain't finding that because they keep thinking that a man is supposed to be dialing into their feminist side. And of course, women don't feel secure anymore. Between men who are just checked out, trying to be men on their own terms, which only turns into a checked out or an abusive man in the first place, or men trying to flip and be women, how is a woman supposed to feel secure? They can't. So they're like, well, I guess I'm just supposed to be independent and look out for number one and all that sort of stuff. And, and they see what men do and they want the glory of a man. And that was warned about us. That's, that's the word actually. There the it glory, is, right? Yeah. That was told. Yeah, and, and, they, and they want that to be a buffet too, right? I'll take yes. some of that. Uh, no, you can have that. Yeah. Yeah. And that was told to us from the beginning. The Lord even said it. It's like, look, you're going to covet, you're basically going to covet the, uh, and desire the things of your husband. And there's, and, and when you translate that, it's, it's like, you don't want to obey. You want to control your husband or, or your man, or, or you, you don't want to be submissive to him. You, you're going to want it the other way around. So, you know, these things are being played out. It's already a symptom that a woman is going to have. And then it's exacerbated by a lot of men being checked out in the first place. Yeah. Um, just as a quick note, a side note, uh, I finally got a chance to see um, All Quiet on the Western Front, which is a Netflix, uh, it's a German movie about, you know, it's the classic World War I story. Uh, and and there's nothing nothing worse has ever happened in, to, to human beings than, than what the men had to go through in, in World War I on the Western Front. It's just, it's just the most awful thing ever. Mm. And in this particular retelling of this classic story, one of the guys runs off with these uh, French girls just for an evening, an afternoon, basically. And he comes back with a scarf that this woman had worn and it's still got her smell on it. Mm. And they, they kind of like every guy in the barracks, every man in the barrack wants to get a smell of it. It's, it's like neck, it's perfume. Right. Mm. And, and throughout the, throughout the course of the story, you, you find this scarf passing from one guy to another as the original, as the person who's holding it gets killed. Mm. And, and they're, they're just constantly holding on to this thing. Like it's almost like a, like rosary or something, you know? <laughs> and, and what it is, is, is it's it's men who were in the 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 most impossible living hell ever created on earth ever, and what what that scarf is for them it's a, is it's a reminder that there's a world outside. This also reminder is what they're fighting for, and it I really think that this almost ought to be I don't believe anything should be mandatory really, but it ought to, almost ought to be mandatory viewing for um, for all young people, men and women both, because. It shows. It shows. It shows in graphic detail what men go through, and why, and how important that idea of of. Uh, it's not even a chaste woman so much as just a good woman, right? Somebody, somebody worth coming home to, somebody mm -hmm. worth fighting for, and what we're seeing now, especially among the really young women, is that they have been told that they can be as sexualized as men, and that they can have as many partners as men, mm -hmm. and so they do. And then not only are they amazed when they can't keep a guy because they've slept with 60 guys before that, they also 
seem to think that when you ask these, and, and some of these girls are just, you know, they're just, well, the old term used to be gold diggers. There's a newer term for them now. I'm just not going to repeat it. Uh, and, and when you ask them what they're looking for, and they'll say, well, for, my minimum standards are, you know, six foot one guy, he's got to be making at least $500,000 a year. He's got to be driving this kind of car and so on. And you look, and, and, and this is the good news, more and more and more I'm seeing men really starting to respond to this. And so you'll see somebody say, well, okay, so that's what you want. What do you bring to the table? Mm. And they're like, what do you mean? Well, what do you bring to the table? Well, look at me. I'm gorgeous. Well, first of all, you, you, you might be a seven on a good day in good light. Okay. The guy you're talking about has his pick of, of the nines and tens in the world. What makes you think he would ever, the kind of person that you're demanding for yourself, what makes you think he would ever stoop to go on out with you? You've got nothing to offer. You have no personality. You've got no, not, you, 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 you're just, you just, you you've got your, you know, um, only fans page. What, what do you expect? <laughs> What do you expect? Mm. And what you realize is they're just completely delusional mm. about this stuff. And also, it bears mentioning that, that one of the things I've seen more and more of, and this is pretty much exclusively women, is, is they're lamenting the fact that men don't approach them and also that they don't know how to go out. They don't know how to approach somebody in a, in a, in a bar or a nightclub. Right, not even to go out for a hookup. They just don't know how to say hi to people. Mm. It's all swipe left or swipe right now. That's all there is to it. Right, it's all they know how to do, and so, and so they see somebody who superficially matches what they think they want. They swipe right to the guy. They text him. He texts back. What you doing? Nothing. You want to hang out? Yeah. Okay. Next thing you know, sex on the first date, and then the guy ghosts them. He disappears, mm. and they're and they're amazed. They're amazed. They don't understand <laughs> it. Right, and and what what this this progressive lie has told them is, is that you can be as promiscuous as men want to be, as men are. Mm. Okay. And, and you are, but it's not, it, they always say it's not fair. It's like, look, of course it's not fair. It's not fair that the men had to go into those freaking trenches, right? And get themselves blown to ribbons mm. to protect the women back home. It's not fair either. Women getting to the lifeboat before men, that's not fair either. So of course it's, it's not fair on balance. It's fair. Mm -hmm. But, but I just see this crisis, and it's getting worse, yeah. real, real fast. Absolutely, man. And, and you know, we're dealing with a lot of broken women, and they're they're coming from broken situations. You know, um, the the men. That's why one of the things that I frown on really big time, Bill, is when this whole narrative that you know, where are the fathers, where are the fathers. It's like, no, man, where are the husbands, where are the husbands. Yeah, yeah, you've said that so many times. Right? Absolutely right. And, and, and it's, that's not a narrative that goes out. And it's like, it's a tried and true, it's a tried and true failure. It's tested in the world. And when you see that, I mean, anybody, as we talk about the baby daddy and stuff like that, anybody can go out there and father a bunch of kids. The commitment is being a husband. That daughter of yours needs to see, you know, she needs to see that example, that security. That you'll a, be there. That's right. Yeah. That's a, the, between a man and a woman and that, that he, he honors and values his wife which is pleasing to the Lord and vice versa. And when they see that kind of commitment and that kind of honor, it's like, well, then you're, you're, you're building, you're helping to build. And in this world, man, there's going to be mistakes. There's nothing's going to be perfect. We live in an imperfect world, but you want to at least give each other the best chance that you can in this world. And, and we keep dropping the ball as far as that goes. Yeah, um, that's right. You know, these women, like you said, you know, they want to do the same thing that, that, that men can do. And it's not fair that they can't. What's that saying, man? How does that saying go? Um, why is it that that men can sleep with a bunch of women and it's OK, but women sleeping with, with a bunch of men is not OK. And it is. Well, the answer to that is, well, nobody values a lock that can be opened by any key. But anybody would value a key that can open any lock. That's wow, man, I've, I've never heard that before. That's actually kind of interesting. <laughs> right? So it's, wow. you know, and now, of course, now that's just something, you know, with an inanimate object. When we're No, but it's got, it's definitely got some truth to it. Absolutely. It, right? Now, Chuck, now, now check it out. What was this one? Uh, there's this actress out there, man. Uh, uh, what's her name? Uh, I think Emily Burke. Emily Blunt, Emily Blunt, mm -hmm. right, says that she's sick of feminism in Hollywood. She's sick of seeing like, you know, when she reads a script, it's like strong female lead. She's like, man, you know, I'm, I'm through. I'm over this. It's, right? It's played out. It, it, <laughs> nobody ever bought it in the first place. It's just tired and lazy now. And yeah, thank yeah. you, man. It's tired. It's lazy. And, you know, the thing is, Bill, when you have these 
narratives that go out like this where, you know, the woman is strong and independent and not that I'm, I'm, I'm frowning on strength. I'm not frowning on independence. That's not the point. Stunning and brave girl boss. Yeah, right. But the yeah. thing is, okay, so if we don't have like the whole dynamic of man going out and, and doing handling his business and at the end gets the girl, you know, I mean, don't get me wrong, because I understand in the right to mate, you know, with the money and stuff like that, that's symbolic of a, of a mane and plumage right. and things like that. You want to have the right to mate. I got Absolutely. That. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, we, we're getting away from, hey, in the in the end, the hero gets the girl. The, the feminism has destroyed women being seen as valuable. And I'm not that's talking it. about- That's exactly it. That's it in a nutshell. Precisely you, correct. Not, 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 a, not, a, not a value as in, oh, this is my toy. This is my prize to do whatever I want with. You're a human being. I'm, I want you by my side. I want to be at your side. I want to honor you. You know, if I open the door for you, it's not because I'm, I'm thinking you're too weak to open the door for yourself. I'm just valuing you, valuing you as a woman. I want the rest of your day. If this could be the first step of your threshold into a better day, I want to be there for that. That's all it is. Yep. That's all it is. Now, feminism has turned that into something else, and it is it is parasitically, it is, it is destroying and just robbing women. It is robbing them of being seen as a as as a as valuable. As a valuable as a person, like I said, not a valuable as a trophy or a toy or some sort of possession. Is a valuable human being. Feminism is robbing y'all of that, and y'all are going flipping nuts. Yeah, and and the dynamic, the traditional dynamic, uh, if you, you really want to simplify it, the way it's always been is that the women make the decision as to whether or not to begin the relationship. Mm. You ask somebody out on a date. It's at least when we all grew up, you know, when when the world was sane. It was up to the guy to take that long walk, right? Mm. Across the bar floor and start chatting up somebody, get shot down in front of everybody, that kind of thing. <laughs> but it was up to men to it was up to men to make the approach. Women would decide whether or not to start the relationship, but men would decide whether or not to seal the relationship. Right? So so the woman says yes or no to the initial date, and then it's up to the man to propose. This is the traditional mm. view of things. And 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 there's a there's a balance there. And what among the many other uh, uh, symptoms I'm seeing of this uh, pathology that the left keeps trying to introduce is an increasing rabid, spittle-flying hatred of men on the part of some women, just absolute hatred of them. Mm -hmm. and, and, and to some degree, it's understandable. Men are, are not treating them as if they're uh, valuable, as you say, because because they're complete total pains. They're bitches, you know, who, who they, they're just, all they do is just, you know, rah, 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 rah. and and so concurrent with all of this, there's a, a trend. I, like I say, I, I like to watch a lot of stuff that's not political stuff, not overtly political stuff. I'm really much more interested in a much wider net. And, and so I can kind of see trends as they're starting to develop. And one of the things that I've been seeing over the last several months, maybe six months to a year tops, but it's relatively short term, is a is a term that's going around called MGTOW, MGTO, they're calling it. And when I first saw it, I saw it cropping up in a bunch of places. And what the hell does this mean? So I just did a quick Google search. It stands for men going their own way. And what and what this what this antagonism and this male hatred and this toxic masculinity and this mansplaining and all this other stuff, right? All of this stuff that's coming out that women are taught that they need to be doing by these lunatic leftists who are as unhappy as any people that ever lived. What it's done is basically say to men, that and the fact that it's just a swipe, it's a swipe right, right? You don't have to court somebody. You don't have to, you don't have to establish a relationship. These are hookup ads. Mm. So, so what the position that young men are taking is, okay, if women are going to be such a, a, an endless pain in the butt and I can have sex with the swipe of, a, of an app, that's what we'll do. Mm. The, the, the bros will hang out and, and we'll be friends and we'll have honorable relationships and, and we can trust each other. We're not going to stab each other in the back and we're not going to constantly talk about how toxic we all are. We're not going to be lectured all the time. We're just going to hang out together. And then when we feel our natural urges, we'll just pick up a, a, an app like Tinder and we'll just, you know, we'll just go out for a night. Boom. And there's always somebody next in line to swipe left or right on. Mm. And this is the world that the left has created. Yes. This is, this isn't, this isn't the fault of modern women. It's not like there's a problem with women so much as there's been a philosophy that's been fed to them for two generations now. And we're not talking about original feminism either, so we can just be clear on this, right? The idea that, that a person should get paid the same pay for the same job is just a fundamental 
decent reaction anybody has and has been the law since the 1970s, mm. right? So, um, and as people, oh, well, women make less than men. Well, if that were true, then businesses would hire only women, right? Exactly. You could afford to, could afford to pay them 75 cents on the dollar, mm. then there wouldn't be any men employed. But what it's doing is it's driving, it's driving the two sexes further and further apart. And, and women become more and more cut off and emotionally uh, estranged and, and lonely and frustrated and enraged and angry and, and, and frankly, in some cases, just plain insane. Mm -hmm. And the men are at the point where they're saying, you know what? Knock yourselves out, girls. Uh, me and the rest of the bicycles will be over here having a good time watching football. And um, you'll probably hear from us, you know, somewhere on a six o'clock on a Saturday. And, um, and we'll sign off at two o'clock the next morning and you'll never see us again. And mm -hmm. why should you? Why should we? Thank you, man. It's like, you know, like, like I said, who wants to deal with these complications? But we're taught that that's what qualifies you as that's what validates you is, is being complicated. Right. And you don't want to bring that to the table in a relationship. You know, and, and the funny thing is, is that it, be, it, be, it, be, it becomes this primitive way of behaving with each other. You know, I mean, this ain't new stuff. I mean, we didn't need TikTok or anything like that for this. You know, we've, we've gone through this dynamic, you know, the, the, the tug of war of love, all's fair in love and war for since the dawn of, of civilization, we've been doing this. As I've always said, man, we're just in an age where we should know better now. I mean, how many times do we need to go around with this? And, you know, in this time that we should know better where we call ourselves woke, and so informed and and you and you talk to anybody who's going to college and you know, they're always, oh, you know, I'm taking psychology also. The students, what? Everybody's taking flip of psychology, but you guys are psychotic. You know, everybody's taking psychology, you know, and, and they want to be so informed and so intelligent. But in this intelligent, in this wokeism, it's like all you guys are doing is trying to educate and justify to yourselves why it's okay to behave so primitive. You know, it's like you want to do all these things that appeal to your primitive, selfish nature. And you want to have like the intellectual recourse to be able to justify it. That's basically what, what all this stuff is about now. And more and more, I guess people are becoming more efficient in making themselves feel more and more empty. And I'm sorry, ladies, you know, um, if for as, as a man, I know that as, as it, within the male dominion, we've, we've taken our dominion and we're domineering with it. Right. I, 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 I've been that person myself and I hope that I have repented for those things. But at the same time, your response to it is a response of vengeance. Y'all are supposed to be the, the, the level headed, reasonable, diplomatic ones and stuff like that. Well, at least <laughs> at least the ones that temper the, the, the most, you know, violent uh, out impulses that that men have yes you know that if you look like the really traditional family it's like dad gets angry about something and mom's job is to kind of cool him down a little bit and he probably should be angry about that and somebody mm -hmm. needs to be angry about yes. that right that's that's the strength but mm -hmm. it needs to be tempered it's completely inverted now mm -hmm. and um you know just to wrap this up i've been married for almost six years now and as long as 10 or 12 years ago when i was kind of doing the la dating scene people would say what that's like what, what's it like bill and i'd say well the men are weak and the women are crazy. <laughs> and the weak men make the women crazy and the crazy women make the men weak. Absolutely. And and that trend is just continuing. Yeah. But like I said, I'm starting to see some, it's not even a pushback so much as I'm all across the board now, everywhere I look, I'm starting to see people waking up to the fact that this stuff just doesn't work. And the reason we're conservatives is we stay with the stuff that does work. They always say, oh, you guys never want to try anything new. No, we're all, we're all in favor of trying things new. But just because it's new doesn't mean it's better. Mm -hmm. Many times, stuff that's new is worse. From an evolutionary point of view, most mutations, the huge majority of mutations, are, and the, they're just a catastrophe. It's one in a hundred mutations are beneficial. So yeah, so we're just, you know, we're just basically saying, if it if it ain't broke, don't fix it, and and these um, progressives have been doing that. Look, there's not a mystery why they do this. Okay, they they started saying this in the Frankfurt School in the 1920s, and then Saul Alinsky and all the rest of it. If you're going to if you're going to defeat America and America's unique moral foundation, you have to destroy the foundation, and mm -hmm. that means you have to have everybody attacking not each other but attacking the middle. So. Blacks have to attack. This is the most racist country, and 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 homosexuals have to 
attack it as the most homophobic country. Women have to attack it as the most misogynist culture and the patriarchy and the mansplaining, all, all, of, all of it, right? So this contagion has been injected into the population. It's taught in schools, and we're getting a whole new term can contagion that's being taught in schools now too. And I know why they're doing that as well, but we've talked about that before. So yeah, I mean, like basically when you start saying to a boy or a girl who's, you know, eight, well, don't tell your parents, but you know, did you say you really wanted to be a, a little girl, Johnny? Yeah, I think it'd be great. Okay, well, we'll put you on puberty blockers. And, and it's... It's not even so much designed to make them gay or trans as to make them victims. Because victimhood is the coin of the realm. That's, that's all it is. And when you see these, uh, like the whitest of the white, the richest of the rich, most privileged white liberals getting on, on social media and saying, of course, I'm, of course there's white privilege, of course, you know, and, and just like, uh, how does a black man feel when this and how, and all these white people saying this, what do you know about it? You know nothing about it, right? You're trying to, you're, you're a white male, straight white male in some cases, although it's hard to tell these days, <laughs> who is basically trying to say, since I'm at the absolute bottom of the victim list, let me at least raise myself up by saying, oh, I completely agree that it's all our fault. Absolutely. No, it's all, I'm, I'm the problem. See? See, I'm, a, I'm one of the good ones. <laughs> it's, it's just psychotic. Yeah. And it's getting worse. But, but... The thing that I keep coming back to is, you know, if you want to cure people of socialism, then give it to them. You uh -huh. want to cure people of intersectional feminism, give it to them. If you want to cure people of any of these make-believe ideas, you can't talk them out of it because reality isn't here anymore. I think that's probably the one thing I just want to close on, right? So men and women today can say, well, men are worthless and, and, and all they do is this and that and so on. Okay, you can say that because you work as a... Well, if you work at all, you're a barista, or you work as a manager someplace or something. If working meant going out and cutting down trees for firewood for the winter, the difference between men and women would become immediately obvious, right? If, if, it, if, it be, if that's the life we lived in, where you had to go down and chop down trees for the firewood, and somebody had to make dinner, these sex uh, roles would be very clear based on the physiology of, of the, the men and the women. And if it turned out that there was constantly, you know, riders coming down from the hills to burn all our stuff and take our women away and rape them and turn our kids into slaves, hmm. then there'd be a little more respect for the guys that start running towards these horsemen with their pitchforks, right? Mm -hmm. So that the others can get away. Yes. But when you don't have that, you end up with what you said. You end up with a with this with this toxic femininity that that wants to 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 cherry pick all of the things about about traditional male roles that they want. And not pay any of the prices for it. And men, like I said, men go in their own way. They're just like saying, you know what? You guys just knock yourselves out. We'll be watching football games and you'll hear from us on Tinder somewhere around six o'clock on Saturday. <laughs> there it is, man. And, you know, the thing is, you know, if, if once again with women, you know, being disenchanted, dis disgruntled, they're, they're angry, right? They're angry they're because... Angry. Uh, you know, hey, where's where's that male shoulder to cry on? You know, where 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 are the men at? It's like they resent us, but they really at the same time really need us. You know, and a lot of men just aren't there when we need them. But at the at the same time, they've pushed a lot of men away. You that's know? right. So you that's right. Yeah, and and we're, we're we we don't want to be in a society like that. And, and as you were saying, you know, with with the people coming in and and who are going to protect the women. You know, if man wanted to if man wanted to just have complete dominion over women nothing could be done to stop it this is the greatest point of all and if you really want to drive a feminist out of their mind this is the way you do it right, right. Just, just you say that you say feminism exists because men allow it to exist yes yeah, thank you there are, there are most many societies in the world maybe most of them mm -hmm. Maybe most of the people on the planet, there is no feminism. There's no feminism because the men don't allow it. Mm -hmm. And when women talk about the patriarchy and 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 how male dominance and so on, the question they never ask is, well, why is that? If you're so if you're so stunning and brave, uh, how come how come this thing even exists? Yeah. Why isn't there a matriarchy if you guys are the super creatures that you say you are? Yes, if you really want to drive a feminist nuts. You say. <laughs> um, Feminism only exists because men have been kind enough to allow it to happen, which is true. Yeah. And they'll get all huffy and stuff. And I'll say, listen, if it came down to it, I could come up there and I could just pound the snot out of you and you could hit me as far as you want to. It won't have any effect. Right. Yeah, well, if you do that, the police will come. Precisely. Precisely. Men will come. Mm -hmm. 
men will come to take me away and put me in jail. But if the police, if it was just the males just saying, we've had enough of this, it's over. It's over overnight. That's right. And I, I don't say that to, to be sounding like, um, you know, resentful or anything. It's just, it's, just, it's just a fact that eludes them. And as I said, there is some good news. And that good news is I'm starting to see lots and lots and lots of men suddenly, and I mean the last couple of months, kind of no longer being this kind of, you know, all right, fine, you know, I'm you know, yes, I'm terrible. I'm seeing a lot more now of men saying, hey, you know what? Um, knock yourselves out. This is the world that you've chosen for yourselves. We'll take advantage of it. We're going to have ourselves a fine old time. Mm. And uh, society pays for that. Yeah, it does. But I think that's probably the only way to cure it if it's if it is curable. And I suspect it probably is. Reality has a funny way of asserting itself over time. <laughs> Indeed it does, man. And I tell you what, it's just like you said, the only thing that stops that from happening is other men. Other right. men stops this takeover. Because it, it, we wouldn't want it to be that way. We don't want, want women to be subjected to, to that. We don't even want women to be subject to what they're doing to themselves. That's right. right? <laughs> it's like, look, yeah, that's right. we're actually trying to help you. This there, there are actually some decent guys out there who are like, and usually they're the ones who come in last and they're, they're the ones who stay in the friend zone. But, you know, the bottom line is like, look, um, what you're doing, this isn't just men doing this to you at this point. You, you have doubled down on it and you're doing it to yourself. You're acting out of vengeance. And when you do that, you're, it's definitely going to go sideways. So, you know, like I said, you don't, women, you don't have to go down that road. There's a better way to do these things. Stop listening to these mainstream left wing nuts who are telling you this stuff because it's only causing you more pain. Yeah, I, I, we should have ended this a while ago, but just, just as a last final thought, as, as I was driving in, I was listening to one of these videos that I was talking about. And this is Australian woman saying, um, when we say we want to live in a world without male violence, that doesn't mean we want men to protect us. We don't want to be protected by men. That's like saying, since there are wolves out there, we're going to bring a wolf into our own house to protect us from other wolves. And I'm thinking, you're close. Mm. You're close. What you do is you bring a sheepdog mm -hmm. in to protect the sheep from the wolves. So what is a sheepdog? Well, a sheepdog has the same fangs and the same power, the same aggression as the wolves. He's just as mean as the wolves. He can fight as hard as the wolves, but he's on the side of the sheep. And, and for her not to realize that, right, for her to make the assumption that just because you're a man means you must be automatically a wolf is to, is, is to miss the entire essence of the argument, right, which is, which is the reason that you're all going through so much of this, of this insanity and angst is because the sheepdogs are not there. And part of the reason is because they have gotten a lot weaker, but most of the reason is because you chased them out of the house. So there you go. That'll do it for this edition of The Virtue Signals, made possible by our members at BillWhittle.com. We certainly hope you enjoy these discussions as much as we enjoy having them. I always learn a lot from these things. We hope you do, too. Uh, if you want to help the cause, keep these messages coming, you can head over to BillWhittle.com, become a member, or you can make a one-time donation. You've heard this from me 100,000 times, but nevertheless, there it is, and that's all we can do about it. We don't have the power to coerce you because we don't want to. <laughs> uh, we'll see you next time right here on The Virtue Signals.